I'm going to show you how I've been doing these shape masks. I sent you a pattern um, and I just print this off and this doesn't have your seam allowances on so you'll need to trace off the size that you want and add those seam allowances onto it. I've been using mostly the women's size. I'm going to call it the medium size. The large ones seem to only fit people with rather large heads. So you take that pattern, make sure you have your seam allowances on it, and then cut them out of your fabric. Your fabric should be pre-washed, shrunken, so that it's not going to shrink afterwards, and you'll, you'll lay them out. And I try to cut a big stack of them at once. Um, I find it helpful actually to have a couple of patterns because then I can fit them together like this. And I, and I usually cut out a whole bunch at the same time. So your outside fabric should be a little bit sturdier, um, heavier fabric. I've even done some out of denim. Um, then you'll also need to cut out your interfacing. Two layers of two of this. I have not been doubling the interfacing, mainly because I'm trying to conserve interfacing. We don't have a lot of it. So I've been just doing one layer of interfacing and then ironing it on to my front piece um, and stacking them together so they're ready to sew. And then on the inside, I've just been using a little bit lighter weight. This happens to be um, pieces of pillowcase. And so I, I cut out a stack of those. So when you've got them cut out, I go and iron those on and then you're ready to go to the sewing machine. So I've got my stack of materials. Um, and I usually do them mass production style, meaning I'll sew all of this seam like this and get the next one. And one of the reasons you do that is it saves on thread, saves on time, and you can put out more. So if you want to just do 10 at a time, whatever works for you. So do, do all of those have your little stack of them. Then also you're gonna do your lining. So I'm gonna grab my lining pieces. And when I sew those, I know in the video she talked about sewing it a little bit smaller, and I do it slightly bigger seam, but not very much. This is gonna help the mass fit together and be more shaped um, to each other when you put them together. So then the next step that I do is I take my nose pieces. Now I've been doing a variety of nose pieces. I have been using these plastic covered twist ties. I have actually found that pipe cleaners are working really well and you can use them single or this one's doubled up. Make sure you fold over the ends so if you're using a twist tie you'll want to bend those over like this so that that's not going to poke through when the masks get washed. And generally, when I use these, I stick them so that the folded over side is away from you, so towards the outside piece. So I just center it on and I sew it on about half an inch with a zigzag stitch. And sew that piece over the middle seam. And because it's a bendable wire, I can make that fit going over so that makes your bridge of your nose. I'll show you one doing it with some pipe cleaner. And again, just kind of figure out where the center is, center it over that seam and that has popped up on me because I didn't twist that one quite as good as it should have been. So that those, and you can be fancy and make it the right color, but I have been just using one color of thread, so you can see my little zigzag on that side. Okay, so the, now that we've got this and our lining ready, then we're gonna put them together. And I did sew it the way she showed in her tutorial, and then I centered this over here, and I do this so that I don't have to use pins. I don't like to use pins, it slows me down. You can use pins if you want. Straight stitch. And I start at the center again so that it's, um, I don't have to use pins 
and I find that it makes it easier to to get it centered and what this is the trick that I've been doing I when I get to this point I fold over the two edges and I'll show you that again when I go on the other side so I flip it over because I've only sewn half of the top then I'm going to fit that on I'm going to fold this over and fold this under like that line those up and then I'll just sew off the edge because that's preparing it for uh, when we're going to put on the ties now when I sew this bottom seam make sure you flip it so that the lining is towards the top of the sewing machine that the outside of the face mask is where the feed dogs are okay I'm just going to continue with that pressing that under and the reason I have the lining that way is because I actually kind of scoop it that way a little bit that helps to make it fit in here a little better you want the lining to be just slightly smaller the other thing I didn't mention is I put one seam one direction and one seam the other so do that again on this side it just helps eliminate bulk again just kind of rubbing this down slightly just so it's just a little bit smaller than the outside of the face mask and folding those ends under as well they don't have to be perfectly the same you want them to match evenly on the fold but it doesn't matter how big it is it's like it can shift a bit when you're um, cutting it out so that is that part and now we're going to take it to the ironing board sometimes I just go like this and press those two seams that I created or those two folds that I made when I was sewing because then when I'm turning it the other way I just need to trim my threads and again I usually do a whole batch so then I'll sit there and trim all of my threads at once and I'll do all of the turning at once so turn it inside out I'm going to press my edges and I go from one side so if you pull this tight then these will be folded in. Press along this edge, and I usually just go to the center on one side, and then turn it over and do the other end. And this one is a little bit stiffer fabric, so it's, a little, it's fighting me just a little bit. This part, because there's a, a wire in there, makes it a little more difficult, but you get the idea of getting it all pressed out. And you can see how it, the shape has taken shape with that. So now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and put on the elastic. Or you can use what we've been using is, this is strips of t-shirting that was cut in an inch and a half wide, and then you just pull on it and it rolls it in and it works like an elastic as well but today we're going to show you with an elastic so now when I sew these in I'm going to sew from this direction I'm going to poke this in just about the same amount as the seam allowance is so about a quarter of an inch in there and it's important that you don't stick it right up at the top you want it down just a little bit we found that they fit better when you do that and they, um, they don't give you a gap on the side of your face. So it just makes it a little more snug if you just come down a little bit. So when I sew this, I backstitch wherever the elastic is, just to give it a little extra bit of sewing. So we're just top stitching this. When I come down to this next piece, I backstitch. And then I'm gonna put my needle down and I'm gonna pivot in this corner because I found that it works best and the mask stays to be together better if you top stitch the bottom of the face mask. So we're just running a quick top stitch along the bottom. The nice thing about that is it also brings you to the next side so you've kind of got one continuous stitching. Again, that helps save time. Grab my other piece of elastic, sorry. 
I'll stick that in there as I'm coming up to that. Needle down, pivot, double stitch there. Stick this other end in. And these pieces of elastic are cut about six inches. They can be six and a half if you're making a bigger mask or if you need a little bit bigger, more space. But that's about what works best. You trim your threads and then you are done. And that is your mask. So easy as can be.